the diamond sutra meditation the jump in the unknown quite often it happens that the aspirants experience a strong resistance against meditation this should not be considered as an impediment for meditation it is quite natural to feel a resistance against meditation this implies that you are alert and aware and you are certain that something is going to happen and that which is going to happen will bring about change in your life in your living in your understanding generally the aspirants are afraid to be reborn you are too much engrossed in the old patterns the past is your investment so it is very difficult to enter into something which is new meditation cleans your being of its old habits old patterns old conditionings and when these are cleaned something happens it makes you more alert more alive and when you are more alert and alive a miracle happens you are full of energy those who are afraid of meditation certainly they are afraid of life and of awareness the fear comes because meditation certainly transforms you it brings you out of your old conditionings and patterns it cleans up your inner being and when you you are cleaned of your inner being transformation begins to happen on its own accord and the moment your old habits are cleaned up old conditions then you are jumping into the unknown in our ordinary lives we continue to use mind for our day to day function as long as we continue to use the mind we can never know that there is a dimension there is a realm that lies beyond the mind beyond the mind and this realm that lies beyond the mind is the dimension beyond the know and this is the dimension of meditativeness the dimension of meditativeness therefore meditation is a jump from mind to the realm of the unknown to a space where mind is known when i say mind what do you understand by mind a space where you are guided you are controlled by your conditionings old habits patterns you think in a particular way and if you clearly analyze clearly observe a person you will know how would he respond to a particular situation when a circumstance and situation comes you will know this is the kind of a language that he will use this is the kind of the way that he will interact therefore meditation is a jump from the mind to the realm of the unknown that is why meditation is considered as illogical or irrational 
There is no way that you can reduce meditation to reason and it cannot be made logical either. This state can only be experienced and you will know it only then. Do you? So therefore do not think about meditation. Only be a witness to your thoughts, your emotions. You can sit in a comfortable posture, whatsoever it is. There is no hard and fast rule. The only thing is your back needs to be straight for the energy to flow. Be relaxed. Keep your eyes closed. You are listening to me now. You can keep your eyes gently closed. And the words that will create the rest. You know, there is an ordinary musician. His emphasis is on the the sound. A master musician, his emphasis is not on the sound, but the gaps that he creates through the sound. He uses the words to create the magic of silence. A master musician carries you, carries the sound to a very high pitch. And then suddenly he drops it, an experience of peak and body. The similar thing I do using the words. I use the words to take you to a high note and then suddenly I become silent. And in that, I create the valley effect. The peak and the valley work together. So if you keep your eyes closed, the ebb and flow of the words as these emerge from deep within, from the inner silence, they will create the magical effect of creating parallel into you a silence. A silence that you have not known before. Maybe as Buddha did, you can keep your eyes half closed, half open. When your eyes are half open, you cannot see everything as clearly as you could have with eyes open. And when your eyes are half closed, you cannot fall into sleep as you would with your eyes closed. So Buddha always sat in a lotus posture with eyes half closed, half open. Now allow thoughts to move on the inner screen like a movie. Look at them only. If you are doing the meditation on your own. But you remember the thoughts are like horses. And the moment you let loose the horse, they like to run in the wild. Horses let loose. Just allow them to disappear in the oblivion. But what happens when a thought appears on the screen? You move with the thought. You do not allow the thought to move on its own for the new thought to appear on the screen. And that's where the problem arises. Horses let loose, just allow them to disappear in the oblivion. 
do not write them, do not think or conceptualize those thoughts, you will be free of such thoughts. When you begin to think about these, then you will certainly fall into a trap. Many things happen. Cars pass on the street, horns blow, thoughts arise, emotions flow, suddenly a dog barks. I am live on the meditation session via Facebook streaming and simultaneously through Skype experience. Everyone supposed to reach in time, but no, it does not happen because we do not give these sessions an importance. We come at our own will and pleasure and then somebody is trying to send the message to connect. A noise comes in. Allow that to happen. Car passes on the street. Horns blow. Thoughts arise. Emotions flow. When a noise like this comes in, Allow it to happen. Do not allow anything to disturb you. It has a beauty of its own. As you hear this noise coming in, just allow it to pass. You become silent for a moment. Let that noise, as you call, but I would say that sound do its effect. You become silent for a moment. You can start it up again. So car passes on the street, horns blow, blaring music plays, thoughts arise, emotions flow. Suddenly you hear a dog barking at the back of the house or something else happens. Just allow everything to happen. People want these things to be silent first, only then I can meditate. I have heard a person, he was a great meditator as he used to say, but he cannot meditate because dogs are barking. He mentioned it to me, what to do with the dogs barking. I said, dispose of the dogs. Tell the dogs that be quiet and do not make a noise or disturbance because you are meditating. If you can speak the language of the dogs and they can understand you, they will listen to you like an obedient one. When I was growing, I used to stay with my uncle, the Sufi masters. So during the October month, there used to be a three to four days, a meditation camp where families will gather from different places. So along with the families, children also come. And you remember these families are coming from different cities. The children are meeting their friends again and again. And it used to be a tremendous joy. It was a big tent for meditation session to take place. I was given the responsibility of keeping the shoes in order and also Take care of the children that they do not make noise. On the contrary, I used to let them make more noise. So some of the elderly people will come and tell me, you are a sensible person. You are given the responsibility of keeping the children quiet 
and don't you know that meditation session is going on and these children have to be kept quiet I said you have to know I already knew that meditation session is going on but I don't think anybody is meditative if they are meditative they will be unaware of anything that is happening outside do you think these children are aware of any kind of noise that is happening or that this one is meditating or that one is meditating they are so much engrossed into their play that they have almost become oblivious of the outer world meditation is that state when you become oblivious you are so much lost into your own joy the bliss that is spurting from deep within that you become completely oblivious of all that is happening around you you do not hear the noise you do not know what's happening in the outer world you imagine what happens in the state of when you are in engrossed into something so passionately that you almost become oblivious of all that is happening around you a car passes on the street you do not hear the noise horns blow so what yesterday evening i went to a function a diwali function as we are in the season of the lights according to the hindu calendar there was some voltage voltage problem only one speaker was working so the microphones were not tuned into the speakers and there was a load on one speaker so i was i normally stay in the front row so the music was playing so blaring that the words are being eaten up by this the the music the level of this sound that was playing someone was sitting next to me and he was closing his ears because there was so much of noise i said yes there is but that does not affect me i can withdraw myself from that noise so if the noise is playing let it play let it happen and i became oblivious i just remained sitting down he has to move he was very restless so whatsoever happens let it happen just allow everything to happen look at this witness the rise and fall of the thoughts soon the thoughts will disappear when the blaring sound and that to the sound which is not harmonious the musical instruments are not tuned into one another one is playing louder than the other what can i do either i can upset myself or i will just allow this and i will go into my own solitary realm which i always carry with me and i am in that state the moment i am in that state the outside disturbance the outside sound and noise becomes meaningless the barking of the dog the blaring music playing does the person who is playing his music blaring know that you are meditating does the mosquitoes know that you are meditating they are doing their job the dogs are living in their essential nature barking is their nature any time there is a little noise a gate knocks by nature dog is supposed to bark to make the owner aware that someone is at the gate only it is the man who is not living in his nature 
he wants everything to be put in order only then he can meditate. So when these children were making the noise and I will allow them to make more noise so then some of the senior members they are doing a hundred meter race they come running telling the children to go on that side I said no this is my responsibility and these children are meditating with me you are meditating inside and let me see if your meditation is real or my meditation these children are unaware of whatsoever is happening inside so when they could not find any solution they mentioned it to the sheikh my uncle he simply chuckled when he was told everything what was happening then he mentioned if the meditation is to happen and it has really happened you will become oblivious of everything as if these things are meaningless for you this whatsoever is happening in the surrounding does not matter to you it is meaningless witness the thoughts to arise and fall soon these thoughts will disappear and as these thoughts one thought is replaced by another go on looking at the entire process if you are capable of this without any thinking you will certainly attain to a state of witnessing and this witnessing is the taste of your being taste of your being comes through witnessing something different than thinking something more sublime you have to experience this to know although both science and religion seem to be poles asunder contrary to one another yet there is something common and that which is common between science and religion is the experiment this is an experiment with the inner religion is experimental philosophy is always non experimental philosophy centers around thinking but religion moves around the experiment science does its experiments in the outer world of objects and beings and meditation depends on the experiment into the inner world is subtle the only difference between the two is that science experiments with the outer world and religion experiments with your inner world with your subjectivity where your thoughts emotions and these are not thoughts and emotions not conditionings but your past wounds that keep on surfacing again and again and you continue to look, live into every single individual has certain issues the past wounds when you have not understood the phenomena of the energy movement certainly it is difficult in science the experimenter the object and the experiment are different one another a scientist is the one who experiments he experiments with certain objects maybe he is experimenting with a probe or with something else the object is different and then he is carrying on a process that is known as experiment 
the three are separate from one another. In case of religion, it gets muddled. You are one and three simultaneously. You are the one who is experimenting. And what are you experimenting with? Your own thoughts, emotions, conditions. These thoughts, emotions and conditionings are your subjectivity. And the process that you are doing to analyze these is you also. You are the experimenter, the experiment and also that which is to be experimented. You are the subject, object and the lab where the experiment is taking place. No thinking is needed. Only experimenting. You start the process of experimenting. Only then you will know the difference between thinking and witnessing. Normally we consider we cannot make a difference between the two, the thinking and witnessing. You cannot think and witness simultaneously. You cannot think and witness simultaneously, just as you cannot run and sit simultaneously. My younger brother was a class by himself. When he was a little child, he was in the class. One day the teacher asked him, it was a class of an English language, where the students were asked, to make a sentence and while you are making a sentence you say what are you doing like I am raising my hand or I am walking so you are walking and you are explaining that so he thought of a mischief which he used to do very often now he has become an a renowned astrologer after he retired from his service as a senior director from the central bank in India. So now he started doing the two things, the action and saying what he is doing, but nobody could understand. All they are hearing a sound of oh, so a couple times it happened and the teacher asked him, got angry and tell him, now tell me the sentence first, what are you, what you want to say? So you know what did he do? The action that he was doing was I am opening my mouth. How can you speak when you are opening your mouth? You can either open your mouth or you speak. So try this standing in front of the mirror, try to open your mouth and speak simultaneously and see what kind of sound happens. When it happened, everybody burst into laughter in the class. You can either sit or you can run. You cannot do that simultaneously because the two are different acts. Running is a function of legs in movement, while sitting is a non-function of the legs. Speaking is a function of the movement of the various parts of the mouth. And opening the mouth is just keeping your jaws open. Running is a function of the legs when they are in movement and sitting is a function when legs are non-functional. So too, thinking is a function of the movement of the mind and witnessing is a state of mind when mind is not 
in function. Mind is non-functional. Thinking is a function of the mind and witnessing is a non-function of the mind. Then with this process, with this understanding, you will realize the meditation has become purely a scientific process. Following the preceding overflow, it can be said, meditation is purely scientific process because you are experimenting with your illness, your own thoughts, you are allowing the thoughts to arise on the screen. You Have you ever noticed when you are watching a television program, a screen comes onto the television? And have you ever observed how long that screen remains in front of your eyes? Between 10 to 15 seconds the most. Then the next screen comes on. But you are lost in the screen that has gone is no more. A circumstance and situation has just passed. But you are lost in it. You visit me. I give you my new tea that I just got herbal tea in a new cup that I recently, a blue color cup that I bought in. You drink tea, you enjoy it. And afterwards I ask you to narrate it. That particular experience is not in front of your eyes, but you are going into the memory and out of that you are trying to recollect and write something. This is not meditation. As far as the philosophy is concerned, you can narrate it. But this is not scientific. Science depends on the observation of the objects. So too when the experimenter begins inward journey, it rests on the same principle of observation. However, it is like taking a 180 degree turn. Now you are looking in. The process of observation or looking in, looking within, into the thought process, into your emotions without being attached to it is called meditation. As a doctor when you are looking at a patient or trying to dress his wound, you are simply a witness, you know this wound has to be cleaned properly so that there is no possibility of any kind of contamination to happen. It may pain the person. But if you start feeling the pain that the person is doing and because of that, you hesitate in continuing the process of your dressing, you will be doing injustice to your profession. You have to console the person that it is essential. I must use hydrogen peroxide because it removes any kind of contamination that may be there or it may grow. It helps. It may pain a little bit. And this pain is not because of me doing the dressing. It is because you have lived your life, you did not listen, you were not careful and this particular wound has been inflicted upon you. When you are living your life unconsciously, a certain wounds are created into your psyche because of your conditioning, 
because you do not know how to withdraw yourself in a particular situation or understand like I could have been upset yesterday with that blaring sound and I was sitting on the side where the speaker was. The person who was sitting next to me, he keep on, he wants to sit down next to me, he wants the company, but he cannot take on the music, so sometimes he will take out his handkerchief, try to close his ears. Next moment, tell me I am going to take a walk at the back, then he comes back, restlessness. I could withdraw myself from that particular situation. I have given the example of my great-grandfather. When he was traveling in a car from one place to another and his, he, the car met an accident. So either his foot or hand got fractured and it, in order the bone has a natural tendency to attain to the natural, naturally it fixes, it gets the joint, but it has to be kept unmoving in a particular position. If you are doing the stretch exercise and you keep your hands stretched in front, you cannot keep it for more than one minute or two minutes at the most. It starts, becomes uncomfortable. So the doctors normally do, they use many devices and keep your hand and or foot suspended. So it remains in that particular position without any movement and it heals the process. So when he was told, he said, there is no need. I will go into my state of meditation and you tell me how long I have to keep this hand like this. The doctor mentioned a certain time, he said it will remain like that. And when your time is over, you tell me. He could remain in that position and move. You would observe those who are watching the live video. I have not moved from the position that I am sitting. From the beginning of the meditation, the position has remained the same, the hand where it is, the body is like a statue, it is not moving because there is no need. All the movement that happens is big is an expression of the inner movement of thoughts. If thoughts do not move, your eyes will not move. And in meditation, this is what happens, your eyes get fixed, they do not move at all. As if there is no movement, because there is no need. So you are looking within and this process of observation or looking within is called meditation. For meditation, no God, no religion, no social belief is necessary. Some people object that meditation is a Hindu thing or is a Christian meditation. What kind of thing is this? I have heard a person saying that he does not believe in the principle of falling objects. I said, why? It is, this is not Hindu thing. Whether you believe it or not, its effect remains. Would you say that you are not going to use the Christians more so, the Orthodox Christians, why do you use the theory of relativity or why do you visit those stores that are owned by Jews? Do you not visit Disney World because Walt Dis and Walt Disney, do you know he is a Jew? 
the all the major businesses are owned by Jews. So why do you use that facility and you are antagonistic against meditation because it is Hindu, it is Christian. For meditation, no God, no religion, no philosophy, no condition is necessary. It is simply an experiment. It is scientific in nature. An atheist can meditate just as a theist. Only one thing is needed. You are moving from the outer world to inner world. Meditation does not need any God or any scripture or any belief system. It is simply a process of experiment in the inner world. You are becoming a witness to it moment to moment and that alone is meditation.